From the Woodshed, a candid conversation with Chase Morrill and Ryan Eldridge from Kennebec Cabin Company, home of the Maine Cabin Masters. Brought to you by Nelma, safeguarding our lumber resources since 1933. See the stamp, trust the quality. Now, from the Woodshed Studio at KCC headquarters in Manchester, Maine, it's Chase and Ryan. We're here again today from the Woodshed. I'm Chase Morrill, this is Ryan Eldridge, and with us as always, my daughter Maggie. Hi. Our faithful producer. <laughs> Our faithful producer. You made it three weeks so far. I'm surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so yeah, today we have a guest with on a later. We have a guest later on in the show, Seth Gass. He is one of our local cameramen, so it'll be fun to have him on here, talk to him, get some behind-the-scenes stories. People are so excited about that. When I posted it on social media the other day, within like two hours, there's like 300 comments. Yeah. I, well, I've, I have a few questions for him as well <laughs> that we can't ask when we're mic'd up. But he's kind of... Be- <laughs> when product- when production's yeah. not listening. Him- but he's kind of was a lead cameraman a lot this year, being local and stuff. And yeah. going forward, he'd probably be... Doing a majority of the filming this year, too. Yeah, it'll be fun to talk to him. But the weather's changing for the better, almost. Yeah, no, kind of. It's been a rough spring. I woke up this morning, and I was so excited because we had, what, a little bit of rain last night? I'm like, oh, that was no snow. We're fine. It's a beautiful, <laughs> sunny day. Poor man's fertilizer. And then Sarah's like, no, the snow is tonight. It's tonight. <laughs> I was like, son of a gun. So it's, yeah, it's beginning of May. We're supposed to get a snowstorm tonight, five to six in the mountains. Right here in Manchester. And it's been windy. It hasn't stopped being yeah. us. I think it's the new norm, though. You think April's a spring month, but really, some someone said it on the news, April's actually a winter month. Yeah, it is. But, but, yeah, last weekend, I mean, it was beautiful, but the black flies were out like that. That's the problem. You get one or two nice warm days in the spring, and then it, you, know, you, grow, you get tough over the winter. You know, so like 30, 40 degrees feels nice, but then you get that warm day, all that toughness is gone. Like, I've been such a wuss lately. Yeah. Like, give me five more layers. <laughs> I want to put my under on, underarm back on. <laughs> oh, it's awful. But yeah, I mean, thanks everybody for listening and watching. Yeah. Um, you know, the shows are still rolling on TV. Some new episodes still coming out. Three more um, episodes of season four. Yep. You know, we really appreciate everybody reaching out, all the positive comments, all the questions. It's just, it's great to have the interactions and... We're thankful for everybody listening and everybody yeah. on the front lines working hard and yeah, absolutely. It's still really tough times for everybody. I think Maine's slowly starting to ease up. So, but we're also sheltered up here. You know, it's like we don't see. Yeah, you know, we're not living the craziness of like New York City, these other cities. We're kind of sheltered, and so we don't really know what's going on. We try to do what we can, and yeah. But I mean, the trees, you know, the magnolias are in full bloom. Forsythias are yellow. Grass is starting to turn green. Yep. And the lakes are just looking beautiful or more beautiful. Beautifuler. I'm not, it's not a month or two before I used to go swimming, I think, though. Yeah. But we've been out scouting camps pretty hard. Um, a lot of nice camps. A lot of nice camps. Tons of nice camps. Tons of nice camps. We're itching. We're ready to get going. It's just now a matter of figuring out, you know, still figuring out how it's going to work with production coming in because most of them are from Denver and L.A., but... You know, Seth's from Portland. Maybe he can give, have some insight into how to make it work. It's tough. It's been, and we've, re- we've benefited in the sense that life's on pause and we're doing a lot of stuff we definitely wouldn't have got to do. Yep. Yeah. You know, so we'll get, we'll get back at it. You know, the weather's been horrible. So yeah. we're all going to come back with a vengeance, I think. I think so. I think so. You know, everybody's ready to work. And maybe I'll appreciate their jobs more after this. <laughs> <laughs> maybe for a couple of weeks yeah. and then we'll fall right back into the old. <laughs> but, you know, I'd like to thank our sponsors, you know, Nelma. They're the ones out there, you know, making sure all the white pine, eastern white pine that we're using is graded properly and ready and readily available for us to throw at the camps. Yeah. And check them out at uh, Nelma.org and their other websites, whitepine.org and uh, sprucepinefur.org. Yeah. And for those who don't know, Nelmer is the Northeastern Lumber Manufacturers Association. Yes. There was a couple of years we went out to the you know, to shows. <laughs> they paid us to go out there to Las Vegas. We're like, oh, yeah, it's the New England Lumber Manufacturers Association. They're looking at us like we're three heads. We're, we're slow learners. But yeah, we'll Northeastern. Yeah. Kind of the same thing. but Yeah, and don't forget, if you like what you're hearing, to like us and subscribe to us on our YouTube channel. Do something Cabin the bell. Company. And Facebook, Instagram, all those fun social media sites. What do you do with the bell, Maggie? Something with a bell. Ring it. Just click it. Click the click bell. Click the bell icon. or ring the bell. 
just click the bell icon. Now, why do you young kids, why is it click the bell and not ring? Because you. Oh, I get it now. Yeah, click okay. Click it. <laughs> like I said, slow learning. You young kids. <laughs> I don't know if she's a millennial or not. Nope. Gen they, Z. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, but she's Maggie's been busy. We got a horse. Did we talk about this last week? Yep. Oh. But the horse is doing well. How's, how's Penny Lane? She's good. Nice. Yeah. And the kids, are you guys going stir crazy yet? Are you guys helping dad, helping you, Mimi? And we have a finite end to the school year this year. Oh, when's that? June 5th, I think. She doesn't seem too happy. Yeah. That's early though, right? Because normally yeah. it's almost... It's middle of June. Yeah. What's crazy? Memorial Day is what? Two weekends away? Yeah. It's a weird, weird time. It really is. But we'll get through it. We'll get through it. And again, thank you everybody for helping keep it, everybody going. And really thank the fans. Our, our online sales are just... They're, they're really keeping us alive. Like We opened at the worst time for the Kennebec Cabin Company and... Yep. They're, you guys are helping, saving us, really. Yep. For sure. So we owe, we owe you. Cool. All right. Are we ready for some fan questions? And how do we get these questions again so everyone knows? Um, you can email us through the website. KennebecCabinCompany.com. Or MainCabinMasters.com. Awesome. So by the time this episode, by the time people are hearing this episode, it will be live on the youtube page right yep so, so ri- we're kind of talking about the future in the future so kind of <laughs> there's a big announcement coming monday so you can comment down below questions or on the facebook page or instagram you can ask any questions and by then we'll have a designated spot too because you know when we reach out f- to fans for questions we'll have a way to we'll we'll, we'll figure it out what he's trying to say is this a everybody hang in there thanks for listening we made it three weeks you can't even <laughs> believe that <laughs> let's get some questions <laughs> Okay, uh, so these questions are from our Facebook page. Um, what is Lance doing these days? From Lance. Charlie. Did I, you just see him? I saw Lance drove by the other day. I see a, a newer model white truck with Gat come on the side. I'm like, how many? Can't be that many Gat comes in. Like the bushes are over there, and I'm kind of peeking. I see Lily waving. So <laughs> he's doing well. One kid, a puppy. Yeah. Um, I saw the dog last fall. Wicked cute, and the baby looks just like him. I'm sure it does. Lance the third, right? Yeah. I, yeah. He's happy as can be, you know. He'll stop in here soon. You know, I think he's probably just getting cranking. Once he can turn the cows out into the pasture, things kind of slow down a little bit in between that and haying season. But he's been doing farm tree and like construct, like heavy heavy equipment construction. Yeah, excavation, excavation, that type of work, septics, driveways. Yeah, you know, the fun stuff that he loves. And I believe the emus are still going strong, and they've multiplied because that that when when once someone says Lance, emus are next. Yep. It's true. We know five. <laughs> okay. Um, question from Deborah. What were your occupations before the show? Good one. Occupations before the show? What have you done? <laughs> I've been in carpentry quite a while. I was a lifty for a few winners. What was your degree in? Human ecology. My focus was chemistry and Asian studies. How did how is that even a th- <laughs> <laughs> So I went to College of the Atlantic up in Bar Harbor. You it's one degree, it's a tiny little liberal arts college. Human ecology is what everybody gets, but then you can kind of design your own major. And my focus was chemistry and Asian studies. I had gone to China for sixteen weeks and I took a lot of chemistry courses. I did a internship with Spunny Nose Brewing down in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. What does that have to do? I can see the chemistry part, but what is it? <laughs> I'm getting it. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. But so I did that and then, you know, kind of like everybody in Maine, carpentry is always. Right. You're always helping out family and, yeah. you know, helping your dad and your uncles. And yeah. What, what was about, your first job ever? First job ever? Like paying job? Yeah. Oh, geez, I don't know. Like my, my first job was at, it was Coddles, but Hannaford, Shop and Save. I, oh, Bag I've, Boy. For, I've always worked for myself. Even in high school, I had my own snow shoveling business. Oh, yeah, did you? Yeah, I used to clean Farrell's department store with my father when we were young. So, yeah, you've got a pretty good Maggie. You don't have to clean department stores. I've done I've done a bunch. I bagged groceries for a little bit. I you know, you, I got into bartending. That was my main thing. I mean, college. right be, right before 
Cabin Masters, you were bartending up to folios yep. in the winter. Even the first couple seasons. Yeah, that's true. Ash and I that's so, true. Because we weren't working the winter, so Ashley and I would go up there and work. And we, could, we love it up there, but yeah. it finally got to that point where the show was finally getting a little pop, and you couldn't be efficient, and everyone wanted to... Yeah. It wasn't fair to, to the restaurant, you know? And what's your degree in? Uh, secondary English to teach high school kids. <laughs> <laughs> go figure. My niece is just... <laughs> graving her head back and yeah. forth. And Ashley's got a... Art, something. A design? Design, art, something. Yeah. Yep, a degree from USM. She's worked in restaurants a lot. Yeah. I also did sales for a long time. I worked for this company in Portland called Auto Europe where we did car sales. And I worked for like, because Port- Portland, Maine was a big phone sale. So I did cold calls like the Ronnie Popeil um, rotisserie <laughs> oven. So this one job, we they, had, they were already customers. So you had to call and like upsell them. So it would be like, you know, you got this, you want these spice packets. So we had all these ta- taglines. You know, you can set it, and forget it, leave it and believe it. And like, <laughs> so I did a bunch of that. I actually, when I broke my femur, did mortgages, sold mortgages for a while. That was short lived. Yeah. When I re- learned what a weird industry that was. You sat at a desk. You were able to, well, I guess ah. it, with a broken leg, you didn't really yeah, have I went a with choice. a broken leg. I, yeah. Yeah. So I, I, desk jobs didn't really work for me, but I've had a couple. Yeah. And here we are, carpentry, really. Yeah. Still cranking. Yeah. And now talk show host, I guess. Podcast. Podcast. What's the difference between a podcast and a talk show? So many things. <laughs> you heard it here first. Okay. Next question is from Carol. What are your fav what are your favorite projects you've done for the show? Oh, so gosh. many cool ones. Yeah. I mean as far as favorite projects, like custom pieces. The Cuba Island light that that always comes out to me because we all worked on that together, it just came out so yep. awesome. And we were just getting our groove there. But that boat, when we cleaned it up and... I like, I the, love it when stuff like that just happens so naturally. And it's not planned. You just took... That was just that was a boat that was sitting out there for probably 30 or 40 years. Oh, no. It was destined for that burn pile, right? You know, we're lucky that Jack hadn't put it on the burn pile. And, I mean, it was just so beautiful. And it fit in that space so perfectly. It was easy to clean up. Yeah. So, I, yeah. For me personally, it's when projects like that just organically happen... Because for every episode, we you know we know there are certain things that we're going to need. So sometimes we try and scramble, scratch our heads to find a good custom piece. But when it just happens... And sometimes it doesn't happen, but normally it does. Sometimes it doesn't work out at all. Like like that, the camp where the, we put the tree through it, and then we didn't really have a plan, but then we put that second story. It was just something we've never built anything like that. It was kind of a cool little yeah. loft, cool area for the kids, and it was awesome. Yep. Or like the um, crank down bed in the... Chris Camp and Bremen. Oh, yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> that that didn't work. In theory, it was great. It you know we it, but we built the whole thing. We set up pulleys. We set up winches. We had a bed that would drop down to the floor, raise up to the ceiling when it wasn't being used. But it was so dangerous when you were cranking it down that it could easily just <laughs> slam down onto the floor. So we scrapped it. But they still had all the footage, and I think it made it into the episode. Oh, it did? I don't know. I don't think I saw that one. But I don't think anybody necessarily ever said it. Anyways, you heard it here first. It's not really in the camp anymore. Okay. Um, has a cabin owner ever been displeased with the final result? Yeah, not. It's Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> no, I was going to say not on film, but yeah, a little yes. bit. We're batting probably 900, 950. But this was back... I think season one, when it was so new for us, we didn't really know what we were doing. And to be fair, the cabin owners said in the beginning, it's a blank slate. And then afterwards, there were a few things that we'd done that they weren't too thrilled about. One of the, one of the you know, the husband-wife duo, the wife wasn't too thrilled. Yeah. We but, won't mention any names, but and it wasn't all on us. I think they had different expectations. Yeah. And it's tough, you know, there is that level of trust and it was really difficult. We felt horrible, but she has since come back and said, you know, we do love it. Right. It was just it's it's pretty dramatic. It could be a shock. Yeah, I think I think that's what it was more. It was a shock. But again, that's the power of editing. And it's not yeah, everybody's happy. <laughs> but it's not like you can explain it when you're doing the reveal. Like, listen, I won't explain that to you. Like Yep. You know, it's like one of the last re- reveals we did, I, the homeowner was giving me a punch. I was like, oh, I meant to tell you about that. You know, it's mine. But the window came, like the, one of the pulleys was broken. I, we ordered it. I just forgot to tell you. You know, you get so busy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Same, th- you know, screens. You know, they don't like having screens in during the reveal. And there's a lot of things that happen for the reveal that 
aren't necessarily how it's going to be. So it's it's a tricky situation. And we have gotten a lot better. I mean, the last the first season, I mean, we we would, it was 12, 14 hour days to get the cabins done. Just ten, we struggled. Oh, big time. Struggled. We struggled to get the cabins completed for the construction, but then we had to take them and take them that much further to be TV ready, beautiful. Yeah, it was tough. We're still learning. Yeah, slowly. Great. Um, <laughs> I love our one-word answers. <laughs> so enthusiastic. Great. Uh, do all of your crew have their own cabins? Uh, I wonder if you, do we own them or do we do we work on them? Well, let's let's answer both like, ways. Like, do you own like camps somewhere in Maine? Yes. N- yeah. We all have, yeah. No, we yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. Everyone has a cabin. Yeah. A lot of our families have. You know, in Maine, that everyone knows someone that has a cabin yep. or a camp. Whether you're related to them or friends, like your family, your great, your grandfather was smart and had a bunch of them. Yeah, I mean we've got a camp way up north on the Allegash, actually in, on the St. John River. We've got one down on the coast, one on Clearwater Lake. That that's shared in our larger family of hundreds, hundred people. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But I mean, you've got a place. Yeah, we got a place on Cobbsey, and then. No, but you, the Jedi's A-frame. family has a place it's on Cobbsey. We've got the Buccane now. Yeah, Dixie has a family few. camp in Togus and, and Rangeley. So yeah, it's definitely a main tradition to either, like you said, friends or family. There's always a special place, and a lot of them like it, it's not one person owns it. Like it's it's a community, almost a community center for families. But it, it can even be a campsite in a campground that you come back to every year. That's you know it's it's your campsite and it's just a lot of people do. That's a whole oh, other yeah. phenomenon. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would have be been way easier. We could make campsite masters. <laughs> Put a deck over here and a lattice fence over here. Fire pit, level it out. There yeah. you go. <laughs> little, <laughs> one of those little magic balls and stuff. Yeah. Next life. All right. Um, a question from Eva. Have you ever worked on any haunted projects? Oh, yes. Definitely. A, so one, the one that... I, that comes to mind to me is the Kennebec Land Trust. Oh, yeah. And the story was, what was her, uh, and the lady, would, she had a house, summer house up by the road, or no, in town gardener, and then she had those four cabins. Well, she one of the cabins was hers, and she'd come out there with hundreds of cats. I remember taking that porch apart. Like, you could see the cats were scratched. Like, oh, yeah. It looked like they were trying to get out there for their lives. Like, when we first went to scout it, it was, I mean, you know, the cats, she had a lot of cats, and you could tell right away from the smell from everything that was in them. The scratches, I'll never forget that. Yeah. And then, was it Jedi or Swinney who was working down at one, and he was leaving, and he swears he heard a cat Jedi. meowing. And a, I think Rodney said the same thing. A couple of people have been like, I heard cats. Yeah. And Ashley thinks everything's haunted, so. Yeah. And, it's, and Sasquatch is out there. There's definitely ones where you get that a weird feeling. feeling. Well, this, where, where we're sitting right now, there's been some talk lately. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, this place is... Could be haunted. Some, but some haunt, haunts are really nice. Happy haunts. You didn't tell me that before I came here today. <laughs> but. Talk to your aunt about that. Good haunts. You're sitting in a chair, actually. <laughs> <laughs> question, please. Okay. Uh, question from Tammy. How did Ryan propose to Ashley? Oh, that's a good question. I know. Do you know Maggie? I know, too, yeah. <laughs> we were all together. We were. We went out to see Willie Nelson. In Bangor, and we've been dating for a long time. Yep. And on the ride home on the interstate, we were kind of just talking, and yep. it wasn't very romantic, unfortunately. We spent the night in a hotel, and I remember you drove by us, and Ashley had a sign stuck <laughs> on on the, the, in the window and said, we just got engaged, and then just flew by us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on the car ride home from Willie Nelson. <laughs> That's all that happened in the car. All right. Um... One last question. Um, uh, what has been your favorite arrival you've done? Oh, that's a great question. We've done a lot of good ones. I mean, you want to say helicopter. I mean, the helicopter was pretty awesome. But there was so. But that might not. I don't know. The dogs. The dog mushing, side was dog cool. mushing. Four wheelers are always fun. Yep. Side by side. Horses were fun. Horses. That was actually pretty interesting. You know, season one and two, that was kind of a big deal. And now, as we've gotten so busy, like season three and four, that's kind of, the arrival's not as important. But, I mean, we had some good ones. I always I always wanted to see us come out of the water in scuba gear, like, <laughs> or like a hot air balloon. Yep. The boats, you know, boats, boats are, are always classic. Yeah. We've been on a bunch of different boats. Yep. Helicopter's pretty, the seaplane was pretty awesome, too. 
Oh, that's right. The seaplane. Remember, Ashley was green. <laughs> green. The heli- to me, the helicopters. I've never been in a helicopter, and it was just so amazing to go down. We went down the Kennebec River, went o- over BIW, by Booth Bay. That- and then he sat that thing right on a yeah, we're on, on the, the ledge. Yeah, right by the trees on the rocks. That was definitely the most thrilling one for me. Yeah, and that was our friends at Main Helicopter right over in Whitefield. Yep. If you want a helicopter ride, go go check them out. Yep. They did tell us they'd do it again. Cool. All right, we've got to find the right one. And there's been talk of a skydiving one. I don't know if I could. I did that once. Did you? Yeah, a long time ago. I don't know if I could do it. That seems. It, you would it be worth, it'd be worth it to see Ashley up there. <laughs> I don't think we'd ever get her to do that. That's a great question. Cool. Yeah, I always love answering those questions. I do too. So keep the questions coming. We'll keep, you know, reaching out to get them, but hopefully soon we'll have it set up, you know, kind of pre planned for it all. But we're going to take a quick break. I think people should put their last names of the questions. It'd be kind of, oh, yeah. La- kind of neat to know so you know last exactly. Last names and where they're from. Yeah, it'd be fun. So, you know, Peggy Smith from Charleston or wherever. You yeah, know. for sure. For sure. Then you can know. Yeah. Awesome. Right. Thank you, Maggie. Okay. So, yeah, so coming up um, after the break is Seth Gass. You know, he was a pro- Local producer. cameraman for the show. And right now we have a really cool hero video about Peggy Bossy. She did some work, right? She, we have some of her Yeah, she's an here. artist that Ashley featured in one of the camps, and we have some of her works on display in our new retail store, Kennebec yeah, guess, Cabin Company in it, Manchester, Maine. And it's been selling pretty well. Yep. Awesome. So check out this video, and we'll be back later. Very soon. I absolutely cherish the freedom that art gives me. It's complete creativity. What I'm thinking when I'm painting is not always about painting. Sometimes my mind just wanders to a hundred different other places. I create and watch the picture happen and it's just freedom. Just freedom for me. I work at the local hospital in the emergency room. And it's a great place, but after a long day at work, this studio is a very good stress reliever for me. I come down here, not really intending to start a painting sometimes, I just come down to grab something and then four hours later I'm into a painting and nothing else got done and I feel great. (laughs) It's fun, you know, it's just fun to take colors and splash them on a canvas and see what happens. There is no consequence to this. If I don't like it when I'm done, that's okay. I'll do it again. <laughs> you know, putting it out there is a big step. It really is. And it takes some courage to put it out there. Not everybody's going to love everything, you know. And that's, and that's a freedom that is... It probably took me a little bit to find, but once you find it, it's such a good feeling. It really is. I have enjoyed the process so much and it's a release and you know if it grows great but my own satisfaction is is mostly what I'm looking at. We'll see where it takes us you know. Right now I feel good about it. All right, we are back in the woodshed, from the woodshed. From the woodshed. Not behind the woodshed. Not behind the woodshed, <laughs> but we are from the woodshed, and we have Seth Gath, Seth Gass with us today. It's funny to see him on this side of the camera. <laughs> yeah. It's you, awesome. Are you nervous? No, I'm good. I, I like, kind of like being on camera, you know? I never get to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, yeah. You're always running around doing a million things. Yeah. So our first question for all the guests is always water, coffee, or beer? Beer. That's easy. Nice. Perfect. We always love when they choose beer. Yes, we do. It's you know, like so 4.30. We... It's time for a beer. You know? So we've got some selection. Here, I'll give you a glass. Some glass. Fancy. I've got some good beers, some not so... Some, some Rising Tide, some, some PBR, PBR some Bud and Light, some Bud Light. Jackson. PBR. <laughs> yeah, <that's nice. laughs> I knew that's what you were going to choose. <laughs> yeah, sir. Thank Fine. you. I'll take a Bud Light. Yeah, did I give you a cup? I don't. I can. I can drink it out of the can. No, here you go. Oh, perfect. I did have one. What are you gonna go with? I'm gonna go with a Baxter. Oh, nice. Stowaway. One good thing about Maine is there's a ton of good beer if you're a beer drinker, and you can get all the classics like Bud Light and PBR as well. It's true. 
and nobody judges. <laughs> do you do you like do you drink a lot of dark beer, Seth? Or you just I don't like beer that tastes like coffee. I like dark beer that doesn't taste like coffee, which yeah. is hard to find. It is interesting. Yeah, you know, like uh, what's Barber uh, Real Ale? Real Ale, and like what's the other? There's the the stout. They have a, a porter that um, yep. Cole Porter. Cole Porter. That's right. That's right. Uh, that's a nice dark beer that does not taste like. coffee. That's right. That's something we all have in common. We all spent some significant time up in Bar Harbor. Yeah. Yeah. Truth. Yeah. What years were you there? I was there um, after my high school senior year, so 2000, and then again after college, 2004 and 2005. So we must have crossed paths. Yeah, yeah. What I mean, did you I do the, the bars, What did you do the first time? First time I worked at Cool as a Moose. Oh, I was really? a uh, yeah retailer at Cool as a Moose. What's the name of the sandwich shop? Directly that across. Ap- nappy, nap- Eppies. 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 Yes. <laughs> yeah, and they're still open. Try they're still open. <laughs> They're the last Epis. Epis was awesome. They're yeah. the last one. Yeah, there was one in Bangor yeah. too, and they closed. So, oh, yeah. cheers! Cheers! Yeah, cheers! Thanks, Good thanks to see you. Me. Yeah. Cheers. So you're from Bangor originally. Mm-hmm. Yep, I am from Bangor originally. Right, is it Bangor or Banga? Bangor. Bangor. For me, I had a little bit of a main accent as a kid. I grew up in Kanduskeg, which is you know 15 minutes inland. Home of the canoe race. Correct. Have you ever done it? I have never done it. No, we used to go, and so you could you go to the falls where everyone tips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you, yeah. that's really the only reason you go see it. Yeah, you know. But my brother did it a few times with his friends, and they actually made it through the falls every time, which I was really bummed about. I, <laughs> I did it a couple years. You did? Yep. And one year, Kirk did it with us. Yeah. And Kirk was with Big Sweater. I, Big Sweater. <laughs> I think he was with Biggie, and. You know, Kirk was in the back of the canoe. <laughs> Biggie was pretty much out of the water. Her paddle wouldn't even touch. And they, I mean, they they just tipped so many times. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember there was the guy, Skip Kellogg, that he was like, he dressed like a hobo clown. And he had a, he would stand up and, and like Do it with a pole. skiff and he would pull yeah, the whole way. That. Yeah, he was pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Skip That's Kellogg. Pretty That's gnarly pretty. canoe race. Yeah. It could be. Yeah. It depends yeah. on the year, I guess. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. I yeah. haven't been up in a long time. But. Could be sunny at 70 or snowing out. Yeah. 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 They probably canceled it this year, right? They did. It's too bad. Yeah, it so is. it's STS sex time, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. STS. STS. What's STS? Shoot the shit. Oh, yeah. I'm good at that. <laughs> Great. It's our favorite time of the show. It's easy. So how did you get into running a camera? Because you went to design school down in I did. Rhode I, Island? Yep. I was a sculpture major at RISD, um, and I... Uh, I wanted to go into film, but I didn't like any of the kids that were going into film. So I didn't go into I, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do – I didn't want to talk to those guys for three years. So I went into sculpture, um, and I had planned to be in – like go into movie making. So I moved out to – actually after that summer in Bar Harbor in 2005, I moved to L.A. Wow. Um, and I started in – uh, scripted, and I was on uh, the art production assistant for the show Twenty Four. That was like my first oh, job in show. LA. So I was like, I would make like uh, Jack Bauer fake PDA displays and like fake. Uh, I used to make um, like convenience store posters for fake energy drinks and oh, stuff yeah? like that. So really, yeah. So I would make graphics and stuff like that, um, and help the like design the big sets as much as I could. It wasn't you know I was the PA, so I couldn't do a ton. And that show, uh, I was back here one summer. Uh, we were on hiatus in Kiefer Sutherland and got another DUI and had to go to jail. <laughs> so we were on extended. Can my production assistant go for me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. My sculpture guy. Yeah. <laughs> so I couldn't, I couldn't, I, I lost my job for that season. And uh, I, somebody called me to work on um, Extreme Makeover Home Edition. And uh, move that bus. Yeah. So I, I said, you know, I, I'm not really into reality television, but I'll, I'll give it a whirl. And they, they asked me to stay on. And so I sort of joined the circus with them for a few years. And I, you know, made friends with the camera department. Um, and that was the easy in. So I just started assist. I was a camera assistant slash production assistant. Is that what you got I, hired on for? I got hired on as a production assistant. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. just do. I was the night PA from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. And I would oh drive around in a gosh. golf cart and bring heat, like uh, propane tanks to the security guards yeah. and whatever. But it was mostly, it was a weird shift. And I it was in uh, Bridge, Millbridge, Maine. So it was like the sun would come up every morning right over the ocean, beautiful yeah. property. And so it was kind of a nice gig. And then I'd sleep during the day and go back at night. And then... It's one of the first episodes, wasn't it, of that show, I think? Or this, was, it, this was not... There's two main episodes. Okay. That one was Wells or something, I think. But this one yeah. was season five. Season five. So it was actually, yeah, season five of of, of uh, Extreme Makeover Home Edition, and I 
yeah, and then I just started doing camera gigs after that. So, but that's a good lesson for anyone out there that wants to get in the TV yeah. field because we have PAs that on our show. It's true. You hear 100%. that story from everybody, and you also hear that you guys, you know, you, now the, the other guys that come in from out of state, they've all worked together and they're good friends, and they they'll go from here and then they'll go to another mm-hmm. show, yeah. and maybe we, we've met a lot of cool cameramen. Yeah, yeah. And, but you, know, you guys all work in groups and you network. Yeah, it's, it's like about, it's like any job. You work hard at the lowest rung, and if you're you know can do it. And if you can put up with the crap that everybody gives you. Yes. I think that. Yeah. Who is it? Jack? I'm, I'm guilty of that. <laughs> I, oh. I give PAs a lot of junk. But it's because I was I was a PA once. Like, I took it. You know what yeah. I mean? I, that's how but I But on the up. Webster episode that just aired, it was the family's nephew oh. who had just graduated from film school. Yes. Who was looking for a job. Jack, yeah. Yeah. Oh. And yeah. so that's how he became a PA for the yep. show for a couple times. Yeah, and you know, condiments, you just, poor guy. And he would, yeah, he forgets condiments, but he also he got he's the one that got uh, he bottomed out the SUV. Oh and, yes, and we we had to get like I think Dixie finally got him out. But oh yeah, was, he he had bottomed it all the way so that it was sitting in the mud, and he was yeah. he was just so embarrassed. But you put your time in, and yeah. then you slowly yeah. work your way up from there. Yes, <laughs> someday we'll see him as an executive producer on a show. <laughs> right, we'll right, be in right, our sixties right. or seventies. Yes. <laughs> yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. And so what are some other – you did some show down in the Caribbean, right? Yeah. So I I did Extreme Makeover Home Edition, and then I um, I had done that for a couple of seasons, and I, I ended up just – it was I was ready to move on. It, you know, it's like a lot of other things. If, if you stay in the same job they, and they know you were a production assistant, it's hard to keep moving up. Oh. So I quit, and I got a job on an Undercover Boss as a camera assistant, and then I became the technical supervisor for Undercover Boss, and that took off for like six or seven years. And I did a bunch of shows in between then. Um, and as the the technical supervisor, his job that is sort of disappearing in TV for anything non-union. So I started operating more. And so as I d- took more operating jobs, I started doing Caribbean life, uh, Mexico life, and island life which are all just pretty good life if you ask me it's a pretty good <laughs> yeah. it's a pretty good gig they, actually <laughs> funny enough they they are canceled as of this season and you know who knows what happens but you guys may take one of the spots that they used to have so H, hgtv is sort of uh, looking oh, yeah. for better content gotcha, from gotcha, you nice fellas gotcha. but yeah so that and then i i i actually the the Last thing I did before that that show, and the thing I was I started jumping into that was sort of my dream job was I got to do one episode of uh, Anthony Bourdain Parts Unknown, and oh, I did which one? Armenia. Oh, cool! And most Armenia. people jump in in like a U.S. show or whatever else. So I got literally within a few weeks. I had I had made friends with the director of photography, um, who is also from Maine. He's from Milo, uh, Zach Zamboni, and he. Uh, he helped. He let me come along with him uh, the uh, at the Rockland uh, Rockport Film Workshops, yeah. and we taught a class together. Um, and then he asked me to come with him to Armenia, and I was like, "Yeah, let's do it." You know, I was, I was stoked to work on it. So I got swept off to Armenia, um, and we had you know three camera assistants below me that couldn't speak English. So I'm like trying to get them to do what <laughs> we're doing, but really fantastic opportunity. And I I can't imagine going there for another reason. Uh, and then uh, that season was coming to an end, and uh, right at the end of that season, uh, Tony killed himself. So that was the end of uh, my Anthony Bourdain stint, oh. which is pretty devastating. Yeah, but yeah, uh, for sure. What you a know, talent. Just, I, yeah, he really was, yeah. I remember you know. reading Kitchen Confidential when I was, you know, my 20 years ago, like, yeah. You know, he, he cut his chops at Cape Cod and, like, the whole restaurant scene and, like... Yeah. I was I was cooking when that book came out, so yeah. I was, you know, because in Bar Harbor, I had moved from Cool as a Moose into cooking, and that sh- that book came out, and it was you know inspiration for me. At cafe this way, at cafe this way. Oh, that yeah. place is awesome. And George's, but George's closed. Right, uh, right. Remember was, the brunch the at cafe this way? The oh, people so would be lined up on the sidewalk. Yeah. Oh, so cafe good. this way is is they're one of the best, and they still they're they're so consistent. And the owners, um, there's three women that own it, and they came up. Same thing. They actually were wait staff there, and they bought the business. Um, as far as I, I think that's the story I know. But that's where I met Big Sweater. Yeah, and, there's uh, still. Food I crave from Bar Harbor, and I think about it. From oh, absolutely, restaurants. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah, that's a good one. Cafe this way, Bar Harbor, Maine. Yeah, we were yeah. talking about the tap room directly across from yep. Pepe's. That had you know tiny little hole in the wall. Yeah, like best burgers, best, best burgers. Beers. Yeah, little yeah. grill. That was it. Yep, that's it. And yeah. It was so good. Yeah, now it's called Leary. Is that Leary's Landing? No, there's a different one. Anyway, know. doesn't matter. So, how was filming in Armenia? Like, it was awesome. I mean, it was. How's filming in other countries? How does it's that a, work? It's a huge pain in the ass, but it's um, – the you know, the best thing about that show is that it 
they give you, we had two full weeks to shoot an episode. Um, and if that, you know, if we were to condense this show into every shoot, actual shoot day we have with the full crew, what is that? Like five days, five, yep. six yep. days. Yep. So we had two full weeks. Um, I was lucky enough to, my main job was to shoot all the beauty B-roll in the middle of the show. So I got to, every time, you essentially set up a, a scene, the two directors of photography light the scene for about three hours, and then I go shoot B-roll, and yeah. I come back and shoot the scene, and then I leave and go do B-roll. So it's it was sort of one of those, you know, I get to just make pretty pictures, which is rare. But that show's pretty organic if you watch, like, yeah. now, now being on TV, I wonder, like, because a lot of times they, he would go out and he'd get drinking and just yeah. go through the town. So they're trying to make a TV show following him around because yeah. he was such a social person. And like he'd find these hole-in-the-wall places, but he'd find the places that people wanted to see. Yeah. So I couldn't imagine having to deal with now that. Now, would you get to eat the food? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really? I mean, we'd always eat lunch, like lunch. Yeah. And, and, you know, in Armenia, it's traditional when you meet someone in, in your, and you go to their place to have a shot of what they call vodka. And oh, it doesn't Jesus. matter what time of day it is. <laughs> it's new time somewhere. And it's all, yeah. And it all, it's all different. Makes us look like wimps. Yeah, there was like, Would yeah. you like a beer, water, or coffee? Five o'clock on Friday. <laughs> Where's the vodka? <laughs> yeah, so it, like, you know, you'd eat, drink that at lunch and then have to pay attention for the rest of the day. Holy and it smokes. was, but it was, you know, customary. And, you know, that was, Tony was good at it. So we had to be good at it too. I would, and, you know, I, I only got to do the one episode, so. Um, I, yep. I can imagine that would have been something that, I mean, those, Zach is a pro and, and Jerry, the other director of photography, Jerry Reesius. Um, nice. yeah, but it was an interesting. And so now you're living in Portland. Yep. Yep. You're on, yeah, on Peaks Island, Island right now. On Peaks Island right now. Yeah. Yeah. Safe I, place to be. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they aren't too, um, mad that I'm there. We settled in. We kind of blend in oh, on yeah, the ferry, you know. We, Maine's tough. Like, you're, you're yeah. not even a local of the island, so they would probably look yeah. at you funny for a while. It's not It's not like Vinyl Haven where they're going to cut a tree down right, and right, right. in your home. <laughs> but, uh, it's it, yeah, it's a great place, and it's beautiful. And, um, yeah, I, I, I was traveling so much um, when I was living in Los Angeles that I, I moved back to Maine. And then this yeah. is really the first show that I've ever worked on in Maine. Interesting. Which is funny enough. Yeah. Um, and so you're, I mean, you are our local cameraman. I, mean, I am, yeah. You're the, you're with us on the full shoot days, but you're also filling in, you know, trying to get everything in between. Yeah. You know, because we've got four or five builds going on at once, and you are yeah, hustling from job site to job site, making yeah. sure you're not missing anything. Yeah. How many miles did you put on your truck in the last year? Oof, a lot. I mean, I a think, think 36,000 wow. this season. It was... About that, because I, cl- I crossed That's a lot I, of miles. The hundred thousand mark, because I, I think it was, I think I had about seventy thousand miles, and now I'm at one hundred and ten. So, because I mean, some days we have camps. Like we was pretty spread out this winter. You come see us all, and like yeah. go to the other one, and, and and when the film crew's not here, it's just you. I mean, you've yeah. got to get all that gear. There's so much gear. Yeah, that goes along with filming. a lot of loading. I mean, it's like you. I mean, you guys. I don't. I wish. I wish I had a trailer full of right? with all my tools in it, and I could just haul right. that around. I should probably get one of those. I guess that'd be a, take a cue. So, but last reveal, did you guys work together? <laughs> Chase was the cameraman with you. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Chase jumped in. Yeah, yeah. We had to be really creative about these last three reveals because of the uh, pandemic. So we we did what we could, and but it was. I mean, you got it done. I mean, at one point, yeah. you had three cameras <laughs> set up. And you were just running from camera to camera, and then the drone going as well. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it worked. Doing the work of ten men, yeah, ten yeah. people. See, the problem is we don't want them to get used. Don't to Don't tell that, the right? door yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, <laughs> no. Yeah, they. I oh, told no, I told Lisa to invent it. some uh, some crew that we worked with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was. <laughs> no, never again. No, yeah. but hopefully we're past that and we're getting ready for our next season. And yeah, so, so one thing I I have such a respect for cameramen now. You know, on TV, like, you'd see them on Deadliest Catch, and, like, those guys are badass. But, I mean, we work in some bad, gnarly temperatures, rain. Like, you guys you guys are there. You guys work 12-hour days. Like, yeah. And you have to clean. You get the gear, check it, then every day you clean it. Like, and when you I, wrap I up. Ideally. When you, yeah, when you, when you get done at the <laughs> yeah. job site, you still got to go home. Like, yeah. Chase and I deal with that. We're not, we're done at the job site. We're not done. Yeah. You got to yeah. go home and put your gear away and then get ready for the next day. Like, it's a yeah. lot. It but you've got a, was it, 10, 15-pound camera on your shoulder. 30 pounds. 30 ish, pounds. Yeah. 30 yeah. pounds. Yeah. And yeah. it's not like they're built to be comfortable on no. your shoulder. I mean, it is not. No, and, and, you know, the technology you would think would make it easier as the years go by, but it doesn't seem to help because lenses are still what they are. You know, you can – there are cameras now that are small, handheld, beautiful picture cameras, but, you know, the, the what we're using is a full ENG rig with a lot of – and, you know, you're you're dealing with 
focus, zoom, um, you know, exposure in, you know, all the stuff in the eyepiece, it would make a yeah. lot of people dizzy. I think I, I just funny. I put it on your shoulder and you, you got it pretty quick. Actually, most people put their hand on the wrong place and, <laughs> but you know, it's, you know, you have a lot to do. So yeah. I got a, a question. Job. How do you know if you're a lefty or a righty when it comes to the camera? You can only be a righty. Really? really? You can't, well, it, you, you can't switch. Oh, yeah. That. Yeah. The, the eyepiece does not switch sides unless, so now you can actually move the screen. You can add a screen and move side to side, but the, all of the grips are built for right-handed. They don't make, you'd have to flip yeah. it over upside down. Well, you're a lefty. Did it feel weird for you? I mean, I, I'm, you're ambidextrous. Yeah, 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 yeah. You have to put it on your right shoulder and your right hand is busy while your left hand is busy. Huh. So really, you're, it's still I ambidextrous. I never noticed that. I never thought, neither did I. But now yeah, I think about it, yeah, yeah, it's always true. I knew a guy who shot with his left eye. He would move the eyepiece way over so he couldn't. But then you can't see peripherally out the side of your out. So like, I get made fun of a lot for fish eyeing. So if I'm looking through, I'm like... You know, and like creeping people out with my left eye because you're always searching for whatever is to your side. So it's a weird, that's a weird one too. But and on the shoots, you can sometimes be a little uh, picky about your shots. You know, yeah. making sure everything's set up. But in the end, <laughs> yes, you know, you know, when you make us move our cars and all this stuff, <laughs> we don't make it easy. But in the end, you know, once you see it, it's like, all right, I guess. Yeah, I guess he was right. Well, they have, they're doing the job too, and you forget that. Yeah, you know, they have exactly. a job to do as well. And like, and that comes from you know, it's it's we we have a benefit of this show of we want it to be real and not be too fancy, right? I mean, it's right. Yeah. We don't. It it would it's be real. Yeah, it's real. Um, but you know, coming from a world where you have an executive producer in your year talking about all this junk in the background, like maybe we're a little oversensitive to it. You know, it's like I'm uh, used to a gotcha. lot of people, and you know, Matt Asmus is actually pretty. He's like, no, looks great. A lot of the time. Which so you're doing really a lot helpful. of letting us a lot of stuff go that you normally wouldn't on another show. Sure, absolutely. So on a yeah. scale from the Caribbean life to Anthony Bourdain, where do we fit in the real meter? Well, you mean actually real? Yeah. Oh, you're super close to Bourdain. All I think. Right, I right. think you know we. The only time that if we have to redo something, we'll redo something. But I think you guys, you guys are pretty much one take wonders. We don't have to repeat much, and you get to say whatever you want. We don't put words in your mouth. They tried that. Didn't work so well. It doesn't Sometimes work. Sometimes they should. <laughs> yeah. But I, I think, yeah, it's it's as real as it gets for the most part. It's not scripted. It is 100% not scripted. Sometimes yeah. we'll have to segue. When we do our interviews, we'll, we'll, they'll ask us to explain something to segue, but the work yeah. and stuff. What, that, that's what I think is really cool because each episode, a producer could take di many different angles. And, you know, it's the producer's eye and they follow the story. You know, and you could tell the difference between each producer which, on different episodes. Yeah, you can. I like Jason likes to be funny. Yeah. Jason has a whole comedy yeah. bent, you know, and, um, you know, I think Matt Asmus sort of just lets you guys do whatever you want, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. So the story. And sort you of have to again. kind of know that as well and yeah. kind of pick up what, make sure you capture what yeah. each producer is looking for. Yeah. Yes. They're, they're all very uh, particular. But. Holy <laughs> smokes. Stuck in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For now. Yeah, right? <laughs> Did you see that post on our social media and wonder if it, what it was going on? About Which one? I put a post about production on the other night. I didn't see it. Yeah. So, got any questions for production? Wonder how it works? <laughs> this we, is it? We, this well, is it. No, we had, Maggie, how many comments were there on that? Like 417. Holy smokes, Holy really? So we're going to be here for a while. Yeah, all right. <laughs> and let's start with one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, hopefully she narrowed it down to some choice yeah. ones. Yeah. Are we ready for some <laughs> questions? Yeah. Okay. These are questions from viewers, not us. Sure. Great. <laughs> Love it. I'll do my best. Okay. Um, this is a question from Mikey. Have you ever broken a camera while tossing, from tossing them while attached to like the wood? Oh, oh, GoPros. Yeah, I, I don't, I haven't broken one in this show, but I've, sh I've shattered some GoPros for sure. That's, that's actually my goal is to break a GoPro once a year at least. Because you know say. it's a good shot. Yeah, and we always the the card still reads the the shot for the most part. So my favorite last season was when oh. I don't know who wanted to put the GoPro underneath the crush stone. Oh, yes, God. At, at Agassiz. Yeah, so they it put the Jason. GoPro yeah. down and then jumped. What was it? Fifteen yards of oh, yeah. crushed stone on top of it. Yep. And then they're like, oh. And they didn't think to put a string on it. Yeah, how do yeah. we get this back? And yeah. we're like, dig. Here's the shovels, and that's it took back them to the an PA. Hour and yeah, half. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was brutal a on a yep. hill. That was awesome though. That was, you know, he's like, this could be great. And then it was, and then we get the shot back and it was like, just a, it just went to black. It wasn't even, <laughs> it wasn't even worth it at all. 
<laughs> but some of those throw shots are great, like especially when really when awesome. you guys actually catch it and it's right in the frame. And you guys are good. You have pretty good hands, I will say. You're you're a good thrower and a good catcher. Oh, thank you. No there one's was... called me an athlete before. <laughs> 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 but we do have fun with that too, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. It's, it's worth it. It adds yeah. a little bit of fun to the show, you know. On the Salter episode, I remember we had a we had a whole train. Oh going. yeah. Yep. And that one actually, Nick that Nick had a really good one, and that one was a sp- yeah. like sort of a spiral, and he caught it. I think one handed. It was right on frame. I remember that one. Yeah. It was and good. then painting them, we always spray yep. right across. Saran them. wrap. If you don't yeah. saran wrap it, you're a fool. But yeah. then you can just peel the saran wrap off. Yeah. And it, a, a drone got lost, right, for a whole winter. I it, also sh- I did crash two drones this season. We've had some drone crashes. Personal. That one against the uh, oh, at there, the railroad station was a <laughs> that pretty, was pretty bad. decent one. <laughs> that wasn't as bad as the one up at the A-frame. The one at the A-frame, A-frame hit the tree, oh, fell that's right. 30 feet, hit the rocks, and then went in the water. That's right. That's so that right. one was like Which total one was old. The uh, bait oh. sheen one. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that, well... You know, insurance. And then Kyle, um, one of the other drone office, he lost one and went and got it. Had a diver go get it, right? It was like a year later. Yeah. A year later. Yeah. Lost yeah. it in the he, fall. They found it. And and they the, got it back. Did the footage work? Yeah. And the footage still oh, worked. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're weird. But, you know, you try. Yeah. But the the, the second one I crashed, the um, one of those shots made the intro for the seasons of the show. So I feel oh, like it was, totally it was worth, worth it. it. Right, right, oh, yeah. right, right, right. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Um, next question is from Mary Ellen. Uh, with cabins in remote areas, how do you get the equipment to the work site and how do you power it? Same as these guys with tools. I mean, we just hike it in in clever ways. The A-frame again, it was down train tracks. We had to, Chase had a, we had some rickshaw. I guess you had a rickshaw and then they had a A rail 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 car. car. Yeah. And we... We pretty successfully got it down there, but, you know, uh, one of the producers that scouted it was like, it was such a nice walk in. It was a beautiful <laughs> camp. And then we all did it, the walk for the first time. We were like, fuck you, Gary. Like, you know, yeah. but, but it was, it was <laughs> worth it. I, you know, that, I mean. It was. It was a lot of work, but that camp was, came out unbelievable. Yeah. And power is always an issue, but you plan ahead. And we did have a generator if we needed it. But everything is battery, can it's be all, battery operated. Yeah. Yes. So, but then we're at a limited, if we're right, way out right, there, right. you know. Um, but we've been pretty good about that's that's you know a good camera assistant um, you know and a good production assistant that are staying on top of batteries and making sure we're charged and yeah. well, it's yeah. worse in the winter that's the hard part about you know filming the winters the batteries get they die really fast really fast yeah and you know it's the elements so if they get wet and whatever else but it's um, I worked on another show called Building Wild which is a show in Vermont which is really similar to your show but a little bit more a little bit more extreme mm-hmm. um, and we did one where we like pulled a uh, storage container up a mountain with oh, a backhoe. Oh, what are those guys' names? There's two guys. Uh, Tuffy and oh, Polly. Yeah. They were cool. Yeah, I watched yeah. a couple episodes. Paul DeMeo is from Extreme Makeover Home Edition. Okay, yeah. And then Tuffy is just like a guy who's – he's an interesting guy for yeah, sure. I remember that. Uh, but that was an interesting one and similar where you're just, you know, you just have to bring everything you, you need, you have to bring. If you if you forget it, you hike it, hike back. You yeah. learn quickly because you hike it a couple miles. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> She's so happy to be here. Cool. Um, question from Jessica. How do you stop yourself from laughing while filming? I don't. I, <laughs> I, I'm bad at it. I don't know. I hear – the other day I was laughing when you guys – we were doing those the clip show stuff, and I was like, they're going to hear me. That We're in such a tight space. I'm just laughing through the – you try – you know, the funny thing is that when you're a camera operator and you're trying to stop yourself from laughing, your shoulder still shakes. Oh, yeah. So you end up shooting and you're like, <laughs> and the whole image. <laughs> the whole moves. thing's bouncing. So you have to be pretty good at it, but it's, you can't. Because they could filter out your sound bite, but they couldn't filter out the shake. They can't filter out the shake, yeah. You guys are funny. It's hard not to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> at times. For the most part. Yeah, right, the right, most right, part. right. Okay. Um, question from Donna How many cameras are used to film an episode? A good question. That's a good question. There are, let's see, so there are two main cameras. There's, we have our A and B cameras, and then we have um, a third camera on a Steadicam uh, Ronin uh, stabilizer. That's the gimbal one that doesn't matter how you move, Mm -hmm. it's going to stay. Yep. And it's motorized, so it does that. And it does, we do, that's where we do those sort of sped up, move through the job site, follow you guys along. Then we have um, usually about two 
long-term time lapses uh, called Harbotronics. Um, those are going all the time. So that's five. Plus we have the drone, six. We have another um, roaming camera body, seven. And then we have, I think, about six GoPros. So that's 13. And GoPros are, you know, you can still, they're still cameras. And we we'll, all have GoPros yeah. you guys gave us too. Yeah, and plus that's these guys, that's true. And you guys all do diary cams. So probably about 11, 12 12 cameras or so. But really, it's two, It's a two-camera show, technically. But it's, yeah, I mean. There's a lot of cool, cool technology like that. One that's on a track and goes back and forth. Like, Yeah. You guys catch some really cool that's, stuff. That's, yeah, like we, that. and we, when it's, when we have the time, we get to, you know, do that. I think that's one of the challenges of this show is that we, you know, we have the elements, we're on a tight schedule, and we don't always have the time to set up those really awesome, beautiful um, time lapses, but when we do, it's yeah, it's a motorized uh, track that it moves, uh, you know, two directions and uh, does a time lapse. Those are pretty cool. You can tell they get the toys out there. They do get excited, like kids. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, you want to make <laughs> as good of a show as you uh, can. You know, it's it's. It's like getting a new nail gun. Oh yeah, no, but, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and it's cool because a lot of times we'll watch the footage of you guys afterwards, and it, it is pretty amazing. Like, yep. It's hard to explain, but it's beautiful. Yeah, like, what do you need that for? Why are we standing uh, oh, here for okay, 10 minutes? I get it. Yeah, exactly. I, I think we, we've all evolved, though. It's gotten a lot easier from... Season yeah. one, we did not get it at all. <laughs> no. But nope. now we, we do can understand and appreciate it. Yeah, it's a weird... Better. It's a weird thing to figure out, though. So, for takes sure. time. Okay. Um, what percent of filming makes it into the show? Ooh, good question. Oof. Not a lot. Um, if you think about if on our, our main shoot days, but let's say we're do well, if, if we have the full crew there, that's two cameras for during 12 hours, it's about, I think it's about two, this isn't going to be a tough 180 minute cards per camera. And that gets distilled down into, oh, what's the, what's the length of the show? 40 42 minutes. Two minutes. So we have, and that's, so six days at. Jeepers. I mean, it's it's a very low percentage, but the, you know, we the 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 difficult thing for editing is is knowing how to distill that down into a story so that the viewers are excited for, you know, forty two minutes. And I think it's fascinating, kind of what happens to all that raw data. So you yeah. have memory cards, yeah, and then once those are filled, they get you have when the full crew travels out. There's somebody here who's. Pure job is a yep. data processor. Yeah, DIT. Yep. Uploading it yep. online. Yeah, he's uh, – this year we had Robbie Savage. He's Savage. Robbie, Robbie Savage Jr. <laughs> Love to say his full and name. And we've only met Robbie like once or twice. Yeah, yeah he, he's in a dark hole He all works day. for opposite hours. Yeah. He's up at night when the, when the data flows better, right? Yep, and, that's right. And then the data goes back to they, they, production. Yep. And then there's an editor who has to go through – Every Everything. single yep. piece of footage. Yep, and they log and make notes, yeah. and then that gets uh, sent to. Actually, what this show is really unique because our on-site uh, producer Jason and uh, or Matt, depending, or other Matt, um, they also edit at home. So uh, most shows would have a completely separate post department, but those guys, um, the workflow is really interesting because they were there in person, and then when they get home, they get to dive right into the footage. So. They have a really close relationship with the story. So they kind of know what they're looking for. Exactly, To yeah. pull out of all that data. Yeah. I think we were told like 150 hours of film time per episode. Like with it's the, the hardballs and stuff. Mm -hmm. Down to 43 minutes. That's crazy. Yeah. That is outrageous. But we have the running time code, so everything's synced up. So even though there's multiple cameras all running, we are, once you get them all synced up, it's sort of picking and choosing. Like they're, you know. The live right cutting angles. now, Got you it. know, you can kind of live cut as you go. Um, oh. And so. it's all computers. Like, I mean, yeah. when we went out to Dorsey's headquarters, like, it was just a little room with all these computer screens and, like, yeah, it was pretty high tech. Yeah. Post is a weird world. Like, you know, I mean, there's big production companies have entire floors of just dark editing bays. I believe people it. All day, you know. I believe it. Yeah. It's not my favorite thing, but I've, I've been there. So anybody in L.A. without a tan is an editor. Correct. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Remember that, Maggie, when you go out there. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Are you going to LA soon, Maggie? Um, I can't go anywhere right now. That's true. That's true. <laughs> She's stuck with us. <laughs> we'll all look like editors soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, question from Sarah Do you have a favorite project that the main cab masters have done? 
Um, I I was partial to the A frame this year just because of the location, I think, and also I just it was nice. It was a cool. I don't. I think it was a, a not as involved, but I really liked that one. I don't. What else trying to? The A frame on Moosehead. Yes, the A frame on Moosehead. Um. It really was. I mean, we said, we have million dollar views all the time. That was that was pretty. Too, it was just unbelievable, gorgeous. Yeah, and you guys just brought it in. But I do like the simplicity of that type of camp as well. Yeah, in rehabbing almost. You know, it's like yeah. I think a lot of them. I like some of the. I mean, we some of the transformations this season were really impressive, um, and like build from like you know that Bickford one. We were t- you guys tore it all the way down and all the way back up. It was a beautiful camp, but sort of rest- I, I'm partial. I have a camp that you know it's. The, res- the restoring and bringing it back to life and yeah. that story is important to me. So I enjoy those, I think, more than I a lot probably other people do. But yeah. Your camp's on Sebec Lake? Sebec and Dover Foxcroft, yeah. 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 Beautiful. Area. Yeah, another beautiful area. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay, one last question. Um, this is a question from Eleanor. Is it a specific <laughs> camera crew that works on the show or is it just whoever is available? It's a good question. Um, it's mostly the same crew. It depends on who's available at times. Um, and ideally you always want to have the same cast of characters. You're pulling from a bench of people. I, you know, I started in as a fill in, uh, season one and, uh, this season was, you know, lucky enough to work something out where I could, I could commit to the whole season. But, um, there's a lot of guys like um, Rob Whitaker was around from the beginning. Hodge, yeah. Alex Hodge came back. The season, these are directors of photography of the show. They they started on season one and they came back this season. And are, whenever they're available, since they live in L.A., they can't always be available. There's a lot of jobs in L.A. Um, here, you know, being someone who lives here, being able to live and work in Maine in this industry is very rare. Um, and I'm lucky to, to be in that position. But um, – yeah, I'd say mostly the same guys. We have Pete, um, our audio guys here. He lives in Portland. He's every he's been oh, on yeah. Abs- every yes, from pretty much great, from the very beginning. Yeah. So I've got a question to yeah. follow up on that. Is it tough? I guess two parts. Is it tough to step into a set of camera with a group of camera operators and kind of you know know what's going on, grab get your footing, and secondly, do people tend to if you're from Maine you know because you're from Maine are they like oh you know he doesn't know anything yes 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 <laughs> I, it's every time prove them wrong yeah that's right well yeah I mean every time I've stepped on a new show which is a lot of time you know you you get a job you get a phone call from somebody hey we're doing this show do you can you be available you know and and then you send them a little you know CV resume thing and and hopefully you get the job and when you do get the job you get on a plane and you show up you have really no idea what you're going to be getting yourself into. And so you have to sort of, you know, manage your own personality, other personalities. And it's easier when someone has flown you somewhere, they assume that you're worth flying right, somewhere, right. that the you know what you're you doing. Yeah, well, that makes sense. And, and as a local, the word, even the way you start the word local, it's like, oh, we're going to hire a local camera operator. And you're like, oh. <laughs> you know, like, and I, I, I'm guilty of that too. When I was on Undercover Boss, I would do a lot of the local hiring, and I'd be like, "Can we just bump our camera assistant up for the day? Because you never know what you're going to get." But sure. you know, as, so as someone who is a, you know, actual camera operator who has, you know, worked on a lot of different things, when people originally, especially when I think when I first stepped onto this show, they'd be like, "Who's this guy? Local guy?" <laughs> You know, I'm like sort of a little bit of proving yourself, but uh, you know, I think eventually once you settle into it, it's it's a lot easier. But it takes yeah. it takes some time. Yeah, very interesting stuff. It is absolutely, mm-hmm. and you do a great job, and we Thanks. enjoy working with you. <laughs> if you can make us look good, you're doing a hell of a job. <laughs> Let's just be honest. It's true. It's true. <laughs> the power's really in your hands. <laughs> oh yeah, it's so funny. Like people that don't, we're so used to it now, but like yeah. Yeah, people yeah. get so nervous. Yeah, so yeah, it's nervous. weird. You must have seen some really. Ner- yeah. Interesting people and nervous people. I am amazed at when you put what happens when you put a camera in people. Like the, I, I've seen people cry for no reason so many times when you put a camera on them, and it's you know it's it's almost it's like catharsis or whatever. They know that that's something that people do. Yeah. The other thing that people do is you ask them a question like you know, hey, how was your day? They're in there. Well. Great day, uh, you know. I grew up. Uh, they start. They <laughs> launch in their life story every time, and it's like, 
okay well uh <laughs> get that out of the way yeah <laughs> it's interesting but yeah nice yeah well cool yeah thanks Just for coming up this is awesome yeah <laughs> yes thank you for having <laughs> us sure. i'm yeah. gonna be seeing a lot of you coming up so yes you can't get rid of yep. me seth is out scouting with us <laughs> yeah. so he's part of the pre-production yeah team i'm excited about some of the camps you've seen for the yeah. coming up this yeah good, season really five good ones. should be great and it's exciting that uh i don't know how much we can talk about it but the idea of changing networks i think is a little bit exciting and yeah it's coming from that hgtv world i think they're a great uh great fit so i hope it all all happens and yeah and we'll see you next week sounds like for some clip looks show like it yeah filming the clip shows you guys are excited <laughs> or you guys are really lucky you're uh, gonna get some repackaged clips we'll shows. be better next time i was trying to make sense of it in my head and it didn't make sense it wasn't flowing to me yeah yeah so you're trying to think you're trying to talk trying to sit it was just to hard. you guys it was just it's hard, hard. Yeah. well and that's the hardest for you guys it's when you actually have to be a tv host yeah i think that's the toughest part i think you know i you, when you signed up for this you thought sure that sounds fine and you've you've learned so much as you've gone through but when you actually have to play host it's sort of like ugh, like it's a lot it's, it's hard. a whole different you have of, to bring so much yeah, energy yeah 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 you're, thank, I, I'm glad that you're on that side of the camera <laughs> for that reason. It's exhausting. <laughs> exhausting all around. Yeah, yeah. Well, cool. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Thanks for us. Thanks, Seth. Cheers. Cheers. Join us in the woodshed. Yeah. See Cheers. you later. Cheers. See you next week. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Sweet. I, I thought that was interesting. Yeah. Okay. It was great having one of the cameramen in the hot seat. Because we work with Seth all the time, but you don't really ask him. But too much going on to ask these cool questions. And they're always on the, you know, we're always mic'd up. We have to be careful what we're saying. And they're observing us. It's, it's a really strange, unique relationship. So it was fun to have him here and just. And we're lucky enough, though, in Maine that we become friends with them. Oh, that's another thing we didn't talk about is that. We become friends with these cameramen, and it's a big no-no on a lot of these big shows. Like, you can't talk to the talent. Yeah. You know, um, like, Trevor's one of my favorites, and we've, we've become friends. I invited him to a Red Sox game. He's like, I can't really, I'm not supposed to do that. I'm like, don't. He's going to get in trouble. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, no, we're friends, you know. No, I know. And we're made, it's a different thing. But, yes. you know, like, we go out, we hang out with them a little bit off camera and stuff, and we have a good time. But it's, it, it's just t- tough times, too. Yeah. You no, know, it is me. I mean, Seth, we've got so many friends in common with Seth. He grew up in Bangor. And it's just great, you know, Maine's such a small state that everybody knows everybody, and that's the way we like it, and that's the way we want to keep it. I do think we appreciate them more after the years. The first year, we kind of... Yes. We didn't realize they were, we're like, it's all about us, we're doing this, we're busting ass, like, well, they have a job to do, too. Once we saw the product, you oh, think? yeah, for sure, for like, sure. Wow, this yeah. is the real deal, the real TV show. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, guys, All everyone that makes us look good. Yeah, we couldn't do it without the film crew, so... Yeah, a lot of people to thank. Thank our fans right now. They've been helping us out. Yeah, thank Nelma. Yeah, North for sponsoring Eastern. this. Yeah, Northeast Lumber Manufacturing Association, Nelma.org, WhitePine.org, and SprucePineFur.org. And don't forget to ring our bell or click our bell. Yep. On our um, YouTube channel, our websites, MainCabinMasters.com, Kennebec Cabin Company on Facebook, Instagram. We couldn't do it without you, Maggie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can she be the guest sometime too? How are we going to figure that one out? I think Fletcher wants to be the guest sometime. Yes! That should be interesting. That should not be interesting. I mean, we, it's, I'm okay. excited because there's so many guests. We, I mean, yeah. we can have endless amount of guests. A lot of possibilities. A lot of things to talk about. And yeah. It's all because of you guys. So thank you very much. But yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And we'll be back from the woodshed next week. Absolutely. Thanks, Maggie. <laughs>